Hi, welcome to another mini lecture on precalculus. Today's uh, topic sketching the graph of y equal to sine of x plus d or cosine of x plus d. So uh, let's see what have we done so far. We have looked at quite a few uh, examples. Like first, we started with examples such as graph 2 sine of x. Then we came to graph of sine of 2x. Now we are looking at the issue of what if we have sine of x plus 2. Uh, <clears throat> same approach is being applied to all of them for graphing. We uh, uh, start with the graph of the basic function like y equal to sine of x. So f for uh, for x giving us sine of x, we had these uh, five angles which were giving us the basic picture. So 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0. And we had a graph look like this. So it was 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. Pi over 2, we are at 1, 0, minus 1, and 0 again. So these were the five points that we were tracking all the time. By tracking these five points, we had a basic idea how does this function behave. Not all the detail, but uh, essentially like the skeleton of sine of x. Then we said doubling it meant uh, we are stretching it. Yeah. So 1 became 2, minus 1 became minus 2. Uh, sine of 2x, we said that 2 compresses the picture by a factor of 2, so the whole cycle happens between 0 and pi. And now we are learning what happens if we add a number to the function after we are done with the function. So it's 2 added to sine of x. Uh, this effect is going to be uh, rather simpler compared to the previous one. Adding a value to the value of a function simply lifts it or lowers it. So let me go ahead and show it on that nice uh, app that we had. So we had, uh, uh, so let's go erase this one. Let's go to graph of sine. We said this is the parent sine function, 1 sine of x. There are four controllers or four sliders that are affecting our graph. We have uh, studied what does the first two going to do, uh, A and B. Now the question is, uh, uh, what is the D going to do? So D, let's see, from 0, suppose I go uh, to 0.5 or let's go to 1. It's rather hard to see. I wish this was written. Uh, prominently up here, but it's f of x is sine of x plus 1. Let's see what happened. Let me go back to 0. This was at 0. This is adding a half, adding a 1, adding a 1 and a half, adding a 2, 2 and a half, 3, 3 and a half, 4, 4 and a half, and 5. But if I go in the other direction, so this was 0, nothing added, minus half. Let me bring this thing lower so we can see. Minus 1, minus 1 and a half, minus 2 and a half. So the effect of this number, this is the number that is showing up here. Let's go again. This is 0, nothing doing. Now we are adding a 1. What does it do? It lifts the function by the amount that you have added. 
or lowers the function by the amount that you have subtracted. That's very simple to explain. Why is that? So if I have sine of x plus 2, what it does is that all the points are going to go lift up by 2. So if this was 0, it's going to go to 2. If this was 1, it's going to go to 3. 0 goes to 2 again. Minus 1, you lift it by 2, it goes to 1. 0 again goes to 2. So these are my five new points. And the graph of a function will be a wave that goes through these five. So this is y is equal to sine of x plus 2. So it's just as simple as uh, we uh, made it there. So if I have, let's repeat this thing, if I have x going through these famous angles uh, 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi and sine of x going through 0 1 0 minus 1 0 then sine of x plus 2 you're just adding 2 to this is 2 3 2 1 and 2 again now <clears throat> when we do this thing the book says clarify where the midline is going to be. Midline is the line that is in the middle of the graph between its maximum and minimum. This is the midline that uh, uh, Alex refers to in these problems. So we identify all the five points. Uh, if necessary, identify the midline and identify maximum minimum and then we are all done so find all points corresponding to minima that's the lowest point maxima highest point within one cycle within that cycle also point all the points that are along the midline points halfway between maximum and minimum then click on the graph a function button graph a function button i suppose uh, maybe this one or whatever it is. So sine of x plus 2 is just what we were referring to. Uh, 0 goes to 2. But pi over 2 we were previously at 1. Now we are going to go be at 3. Pi previously we were at 0. We are going to be at 2. 3 pi over 2 we were at minus 1. You add 2 to it becomes 1. At 2 pi we were 0. We are coming back to one. So the graph of the function is, this is one cycle of it, until uh, from beginning to the end, uh, y equal to sine of x plus 2. Uh, notice a little bit uh, style difference, the way this is written. In this one, doesn't have the parentheses, but it still means the same thing. If you write sine of x plus 2, that is uh, clearer. Uh, we are not meaning sine of x plus 2. Regardless of how spacing is done here, that's not what is meant. That's entirely different things. Topic of our next uh, conversation. So sine of x plus 2 here means you finish sine of x and you add 2 to it. Sometimes to avoid that confusion, they write the 2 first so that you follow that sine of x is all finished, uh, calculated, and then you're adding 2 to it. So we refer to this thing how? We refer to this that we have lifted uh, the function from wherever it was to its new location. Uh, we can refer to this thing as up by 2. So this is a shift. It's a shift. It's also a vertical shift as opposed to the horizontal shift and by a certain amount. That's just as simple as that. Here, sine of x minus 3. Uh, again, this means sine of x. And then when you're done, is minus 3. Or if you want to avoid uh, confusion altogether, uh, that is what is meant here. So the graph of the original function is 
going through all these five basics, uh, basic points. Okay. Now we are going to lower this thing by three units. So we are going to come down three units, uh, three units. All points coming down three units. That's all uh, we are doing here. This is y sine of x minus 3. Okay, uh, so as simple as that. And then cosine of x plus 2. What was the graph of cosine? Cosine started at 1, pi over 2, 0. At pi over minus 1, 3 pi over 2, 0. 2 pi over 1. So it looked like a wave of this type this y equal to cosine of x again this means cosine of x and after you're done add a 2 to it add a 2 means go up by 2 up by 2 up by 2 up by 2 here's another up by 2 so So you identify these uh, five points. You click on the right spots. And then this is y is equal to cosine of x plus 2. The midline for this picture, midline is just this. You're essentially like you have lifted the x-axis by two points. That's the midline. You're not being asked to draw the midline, but uh, it just says uh, plot the points along the midline. So that means don't forget to include these things in your picture. Uh, here's another one, cosine of x minus 1. Again, let's be quick on this. Uh, uh, what do we do? We are... going down by 1 so this is again cosine of x and then minus 1 this is the original now we go down by 1 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 so So how do you make the table? Well, easy. So you had x and cosine of x, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Your picture was 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1. What is it that you're adding to this whole thing? It's cosine of x minus 1, simply subtracting one from these, 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, 0. So 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, 0. This is uh, y is equal to cosine of x minus 1. So this was uh, simple. Again, the main challenge is when we have all of these next to each other or uh, combined uh, to have all of them at your this at your fingertip that's uh, where the challenge is so make sure you understand these things every single one of these things this particular type of problem you should be able to do under 30 seconds um, quickly done uh, later on when we have all of these possibilities at the same time that is where challenge starts okay uh, until next time, good luck and God bless.